Hi, this is Scott Henderson, and you're listening to the Other Side Radio Show with Jeremy and Josh Davis on 91XFM. The Other Side Media Group and 91X now present The Other Side Radio Show, a program about people who make a difference from all walks of life in Quinty and beyond. And now here are your hosts, Jeremy and Joshua Davis. Hi, and welcome again to The Other Side. I'm Jeremy T. Davis, and today I'm at the All Together Housing Complex with Scott Henderson, Community Partner Coordinator. Welcome to our show. It's great to have you here today, Scott. Thank you, Jeremy. It's great to be here. Now, if you can first start out by telling us, how did you get involved with your organization? I've been in uh, nonprofit working with different types of groups, uh, anti-poverty and homelessness over the last number of years. But about uh, 10 years ago, I joined the board of Altogether Affordable Housing and um, helped look at projects and develop projects. And uh, within the last couple of years, the current position came open and they asked me to step in and uh, take over. So I'm happy to be here and helping people out with the corporation. Yes. Now, Scott, is it something that you always envisioned yourself doing or not? I believe so. I think this has been a natural progression because I used to work with homeless individuals and um, trying to find them housing. And so now we've built a brand new building and we're providing permanent housing for people. Um, And some of these people have come from terrible situations and have been homeless before this. So uh, great. It's, uh, It's been a great opportunity for me. So, yes, you alluded to the brand new building right here at 111 Great St. James Street. Um, And maybe you can describe to our listeners, you know, just a bit of this beautiful architectural design and what you offer uh, your tenants here. Um, You know, you're helping to uh, solve the uh, housing affordability affordability crisis. Now, will it all be solved overnight? Of course not, we all know that. But this is a model that works. I was so honored and privileged to have a great tour of this magnificent facility uh, when I was running for city council. Uh, It's something that is near and dear to my heart and something that we have to continue to build on. Maybe you can expand on that and we'll go from there. Certainly. Well, we have this wonderful new building. It's a three-story building with 32 uh, units in it. That's a a mixture of bachelor, one-bedroom, two-bedroom, and three-bedroom apartments. So uh, it also has another mixture dynamic, which is the market rent tenants and then our affordable unit tenants. So there's no difference in terms of the apartments themselves, but with the affordable units, these are people who have uh, traditionally lived in substandard housing or they've lived in places where they've been taken advantage of or they've been homeless. So, you know, we uh, we created the affordable units and uh, we're allowed to work with agencies from the city of Belleville who have clients. We're looking for housing to, for them. And so they put them in here. Those agencies provide a, a more of a daily support if needed. Sometimes they only need to check in once or twice a week, but uh, they uh, they get uh, the apartments allotted, they choose their clients, and they put them in here. Um, and then, of course, we have our um, market rent tenants, which are people who are paying market rent and uh, living side by side with people who may have had issues with, uh, you know, homelessness. They may have issues with uh, uh, d- depression, anxiety. They may have a developmental challenge. So it's great to have that mixture because people sort of mirror what they see in their neighbors. And so they realize, okay, I'm now living in an apartment complex. There's a certain type of behavior that's expected out of me. So it's working really well. Well, absolutely, and I've seen a lot of the success stories already, and you've only been open three or four months already at this particular location. Now, what also intrigued me or fascinated me, if I can coin it that way, Scott, is 
part of your model is a zero percent eviction policy, um, or you work very hard to adhere to that because these people are are trying to um, you know foster um, a new life, a new beginning, many of them, and so maybe you can tell us that because uh, many many uh, buildings um, uh, such as yours uh, or or there isn 't many buildings such as yours is what i 'm saying with that um, policy. Maybe you can tell us that, and we 'll go from there because that really speaks to uh, who you guys are, your vision, your mandate, and giving people that um, hand up and and seeing the amazing success stories uh, as a result of that, I believe. Any, anyway. Well, yes, we, we have a model that we try to work, and that is to try to keep people housed. Um, this is not uh, our first building. This is actually... I guess for lack of a better way to describe it, our third building, we have two twin buildings over on Sydney Street where I'm also the community partner coordinator there. And But with both uh, Sydney Place and Great St. James, we work with the tenants. So my role is I'm talking with the tenants on a daily basis and you're trying to find out a little bit more about what they need and how they're doing because sometimes somebody has a bad day and sometimes they make a poor choice. So we don't want to see them get evicted or lose their housing because they made a poor choice. So I'm going to talk with them. I'm going to try to help them get back on track or I'm going to work, reach out to that support agency uh, that put them here and say, okay, you know, Scott, I'll use my name as an example. Say, Scott's having a bad day. Let's see what we can do to get him back on track. Um, and as you said, we have had a zero eviction uh, uh, success rate uh, with our, uh, we just celebrated uh, four years with our first building on Sydney Place, three years with our second building, and now here at Great St. James, we're, we're just into our fourth month. So, you know, we're trying to uh, keep people housed here. And like I said, if you fall hard, we're going to work with you to try to build you back up and, and keep you in your apartment. Now, when I was running for a, a seat on Belleville City Council, but even before that, um, housing affordability and the people issues are always something that matters to me in any vocation that I have, whether it's... Um, you know, advocating for it through uh, my media and journalism or working with various uh, other agencies to um, develop strategic plans. What I want to ask you is something that I asked the president, uh, Bob, and, and I asked Phil a few weeks ago with some of my other councillor candidates at the time, and that is, what do you feel, in your personal opinion, Scott, that the city can do, our elected leaders, and also those other individuals that work in conjunction at the committee of council level, like I do, um, either with planning or other committees, so we can ensure uh, the model of uh, model of success continue, and we can have more great um, investments and buildings constructed, like this brand new facility of the All Together Housing Complex. Well, certainly, it's uh, it's difficult because you're you're working with three levels of government. You've got your municipal, your provincial, and your federal. Now, the federal government did give us some money to help uh, get this building started, and um, it it's what the municipal councils can do, and they have done it here in the past uh, to help us out. Is they look at some ways of waiving development fees, or uh, if there's an uh, if there's any way to kind of uh, get a, a break on taxes, um, and cut down on some of that red tape that everybody seems to get mired in when they're trying to build uh, buildings like this. Those are the those are the important things because the it takes so long to get a building started and then completed, and in the middle you've got to go through all the hoops 
hoops and fill out all the forms. And I think it, with municipal council, if you can if you can have a way to sort of get fast track that, assign maybe somebody that can help you get through all of that and then get things. Uh, uh, off the ground. I mean, we're not talking about asking for the municipal government for money. It's just getting through those hoops. Um, and another thing is, so we do look at uh, all the three layers of government to say, maybe they have surplus land. If they're looking at trying to do something better with that in terms of housing, maybe they can work with us. We can take some of that surplus land and, and build something like we have here at Great St. James. The little inside joke that we have here is uh, Phil Spry, uh, who's one of the uh, co-owners of this building, uh, came to Bob Cottrell, who's the president of All Together, and said, I, I have some swamp land. And that's true because this used to be swamp land, but you'd never know what to look at it. We built a beautiful no. building on here. And, but it's those great partnerships, uh, surplus land. We certainly could look at that if the municipality had some. Well, absolutely. And I had that discussion, and I am familiar with um, the needs um, to uh, a great degree of builders and developers because, of course, in my family, um, uh, we do have... Um, uh, builders, um, my uncles um, have um, constructed, uh, usually they do residential homes, but they also uh, have done um, townhouse developments. And yes, you hear that all the time. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's one thing about the development fees. Uh, they can be uh, um, lower for um, something of this um, magnitude, of course, but but it's also another thing on getting uh, the planning and approvals uh, quicker and the zoning that needs to take place so that um, uh, you know none of um, none of this development or this type of development gets held up once we get all three partners at the table and i tr truly think that can still be a improved upon. And um, even though I won't um, be in the counselor position at this term, as I said, there is so many, um, so many vested interests at the table um, for the committees of council and the planning committee. I believe that I still have a, a role and responsibility and I will still be working hard and advocating and doing that. I hope to be involved with planning to make this um, and make these things more of a reality in the future. Any further comment on this? Well, one of the other things that we try to look at, too, is trying to be good neighbors. Uh, because so much uh, we hear in the news where people don't want things built in their neighborhoods. We haven't had that problem. We People know our model and say, you know, you're giving housing to people who deserve it, but you're also trying to build a neighborhood and a community. So we address any concerns the neighbors have. And, you know, we try to keep all of the issues within the building down to a minimum as well so that we're not having complaints from our neighbors. And I think that's a that's a big thing is because, you know, you don't want to affect your neighbors and, and have them say, well, I, next time we don't want you to build because you, this happened before. So we try to avoid that. We work with the neighbors. And, and, and city council's happy with that too. Then they don't get the calls from angry neighbors as well. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because, again, uh, and no pun intended, but it is truly, um, this is not just the name of the building, but it is truly working all together in every aspect. And one of the uh, great things and one of the things that I'm most proud of with this new building, um, and I do want to, to um your other facilities when I get an opportunity, um, if that would be all right. Um, you know, but um, is that this is such a, this is such a modern design. It's fully accessible. You have, uh, you will have like a, and you have a community kitchen area, if I can say that. And because it's important 
to you not only for housing accommodation, but what you're trying to do is fostering a welcoming environment among the tenants and among our community and its leaders as well. And that's what makes it extra special in my books. Um, I, I think that uh, people should know that um, you, you have, as I said, the community kitchen. Um, so uh, people, um, if they um, know individuals, um, you've had people come in, uh, groups come in, or people come in and share uh, and see what's going on here. Um, you also have meeting room space. So, so there's all kinds of possibilities to grow. And um, I think that makes it uniquely different um, with this model. Um, uh, so uh, in all your experience, would you agree with that or not? Yes, I, I mean, I said we try to build community within our neighborhood, but we also try to build community in our building. So we give of this, as you said, we have a beautiful kitchen hub that, uh, you know, people can come in here and meet. Maybe they're going to watch a hockey game. Maybe they're going to have a little dinner party or something, or they're at game night. So, I mean, if you are having these kinds of events where you get to know your neighbors, it's less likely that you're going to have a problem with your neighbor because you're going to know, okay, that's so-and-so. I know them. They live up on the second floor and you know if they're having a bad day maybe you can you know say something that kind of gets them you know back on track too that's what we like to do uh, build a community in the neighborhood but build community in the building too so we want the people that are here to say this is their forever home they're going to stay here as long as they can possibly can um, and it's going to stay affordable for them as long as they're here but also with our market rent tenants, they get to know the other people who are in the affordable units and say, hey, they're not bad people. I can come down and, you know, play a game with them, too. So, it's, like I said, it's that those words, building community. Well, absolutely. And um, we don't want to be at all pessimistic on this show. Uh, like my, my brother Joshua and I, when we set out and we founded our own nonprofit organization with the Other Side Media Group, it's about empowering um, community and empowering people uh, to make a difference. But let's, um, I have to be honest here, in 2022, you don't always hear uh, that, at least on the conventional news or media about, um, you know, um, building community as much, much as we should. And people need that. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, spinoff effects, if I can, can coin it that way, if that's okay, of, of the emotional support, um, uh, uh, less feeling of isolation, uh, feeling of um, we're in this together, we're all building a better uh, and more productive or safer Belleville. Uh, come along with that. So uh, there's just so many countless uh, things. I don't have enough time to talk about that, but, but I'm sure you would agree. So, so now that um, 111 Great St. James Street is here, your latest building of the All Together Housing um, through your corporation, um, what do you think, what do you envision, um, say, say in the next five years as we continue? Because, of course, the, the need for affordable housing and that model continues to grow. The demand is here. Um, we're welcoming more and more people to the beautiful city of Belleville, and we want to do that. But um, they need, we need more spaces. And so how, how do you see that um, progressing? Do you see, um, uh, is it your hope that there'll be a project um, uh, you know, in the queue every couple of years to help them um, with the um, surplus need of accommodation or not? 
Well, I'd love to see us have another building. Of course, we want to take a year uh, with our new building to make sure we're doing things right and building that community, like I said, inside and outside. Um, we're, we've been approached and we've had conversations with, uh, you know, with the City of Belleville and also other communities like Prince Edward County, Picton, Trenton. They're all looking to, to see. We actually are doing another building, which is our, our next building will be in uh, Deloro, um, it'll be some apartments up there for seniors, and uh, so we hope to have that open within the next couple of years. So that's our our next main focus, but we're certainly open to look at other options if people have land and people have money. Well, absolutely. That's where it all starts. And I encourage everyone, uh, as I said, uh, and th this season, Joshua and I... Um, feel, um, I'm not trying to speak for him, he couldn't be here today, um, but he he wants to uh, see this facility uh, and that, and we want to do a follow-up. Um, but um, it takes all of community to step up. And so uh, no matter what walk of life you're, you're from, uh, you know, I, I'm not just going to be uh, sitting there and and not contributing to the fabric and to the issues in which I care about. Um, yes, um, yes, I I was committed, and I thank everyone who supported my campaign this time for a councillor seat. And yes, maybe I'm not um, in the councillor seat, but I'm in a position to help. And we can all make a difference. And so I'm going to continue to do that. Um, now, uh, that's exciting news when you said about Deloro. Um, what, in your own personal opinion, what were, what were some of the challenges uh, to getting this latest project off the ground? Um, or was it just getting the bilateral co cooperation of all three levels of government, um, you know, to invest in it? Or uh, were there other unforeseen challenges? And, um, and what, um, what are some of the things that, um, uh, that um, the Altogether Housing Corporation will have to work on uh, well moving forward uh, for next projects here in, here in Belleville and beyond. And what are, what are the tenants saying about all this? Well, I think the biggest challenge for us when we started with uh, the development of this building is we didn't realize there was going to be a global pandemic. So, of course, that created you know, issues where you couldn't get access to certain things, trades, some of the supply chain things. Um, we hope moving forward that we're not going to have those issues, but we're also, it costs more to build a building now because uh, the, the supply chain issues plus inflation. So, you know, we, we, need, we need that funding from all three sources of government to get it, to get it off the ground. So um, we hope that we won't have any more big challenges like that. Um, but the tenants here love this place. Uh, I have, I'm here two and a half days a week with this building and two and a half days my other building. When I'm here at Great St. James, I have the door open, I have the coffee on, people come in and they sit and they talk. They get to know me and so they know who I am and what I'm all about so they can come to me if they have a problem and they're less likely to be afraid to let me know if something else is going on in the building because they'll say, hey, Scott's a good guy, I'll let him know what I saw or what I heard. That way we can address issues that keep people housed and of course keep the rest of the tenants happy. Um, so moving into the future, we we hope that, you know, all of this dedication we hear from all of the levels of government that affordable housing is one of the top issues to deal with. We hope that they will continue to, uh, you know, put their money where their mouth is, but also get behind it. Like you said, look at some of those red tape issues or look at some of the uh, development fees and see what we can do to fast track this. So uh, just like myself, would you welcome 
of the city of Belleville and the new incoming council to have a follow-up housing summit to uh, bring you guys to the table, bring other uh, agencies and, and perhaps uh, other uh, citizens like myself who work uh, on committees of council to the table so we can continue to ensure that we are identifying and solving and creating a positive uh, resolve for these issues and um, the housing affordability developments um, pr development projects in the future or not. We welcome the opportunity to meet with the new council. Uh, we've had an opportunity to work with the uh, the previous mayor as we were getting developments going. Um, but certainly that opportunity will be coming up shortly because we, uh, we had planned to have a grand opening uh, sometime later this month, possibly early next month, to sort of show off our building. Although we've been open for four months, we haven't had an official opening. So we want to do that, invite the local council in, invite interest persons like yourself in, see what we're all about, and then, you know, hear what they, they think in terms of how how they could work with us to uh, make other developments so we can see more successful tenants in the future. Well, absolutely. And it could be a case of, you know, also inviting um, um, our business and corporate community as we're a part of the, um, and we're a proud part of the Belleville and District Chamber of Commerce for many, many years. And so we've got a mix of uh, uh, the business community along with our nonprofit associations. So we, it has to be, um, it could potentially be a mix of um, public-private partnership as well to help us enhance the vision. I'm so excited. Um, we want to have you back. Well, we can have you back quite regularly and maybe have different uh, roundtable discussions with the entire staff. It's been my pleasure to be here today to, um, uh, you know, uh, catch up with you again. Uh, also, we were taking some photographs with um, a journalism student, and and it's just, you know, it's something something to behold and and you should be very proud and your team should be very proud that you're a part of it and i'm proud to say that this is in the city of belleville where i love and i will do anything to further the cause and i'm not going anywhere so thank you very much scott um um if you can um tell our listeners where they can learn more information about the All Together Housing Corporation and get um, possible future supports, and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. If you want to reach out to us, the best site is our website, altogetherhousing.ca. You can actually see some wonderful pictures of uh, our new build here and uh, see uh, what it looked like before, that swamp land that we talked about. But uh, we, uh, we love to hear from people, and we hope to have some really unique uh, opportunities in the near future. You really did drain the swamp for something good. So for now, this has been... The Other Side Radio Show on location at 111 Great St. James Street um, and the All Together Housing Complex with Scott Anderson. I'm Jeremy Davis. We will see you next week. God bless. The Other Side Radio Show is a production of the Other Side Media Group in association with 91X. You can connect on Facebook at the Other Side Media Group, Instagram at Jeremy Tyler Davis, or on YouTube at Jeremy T. Davis Belleville, Ontario for on-demand episodes and more. Tune in next week for another episode of the Other Side Radio Show.